So um, I need to do two other things before I close up Photoshop. The first thing that I need to do is sharpen the image. So I'll go down here to my layer, select filter, sharpen and unsharp mask. And then I'll go over somewhere where I could clearly see. So you could see the before and after. Let me try lowering the threshold a little bit. Increase that to about 1.4. Increase the sharpness to about 180 or so. That should work. Lower down the threshold a little bit, and we should be good. So I'll go ahead and select all of the different layers that I did, Command E, to sort of pull them all into one. There we go. And the last thing I'm going to do is crop it. So I'll go ahead and select here the rule of thirds. I have a lot of things going on here. I've got this beautiful um, little bridge that takes us out to the boathouse that I like a lot. It's old, it's weathered. I like that. I'm going to go ahead and lower the sky, which is a bit bland, to make it a little bit less symmetrical. There we go. I like how that's looking. Okay, I'll hit the checkbox here to tell it to go ahead and save that change. What I will do now is I will export this image and I will open it up again in Color Effects Pro to show you the final adjustments that I would make on it before calling it done. All right, so here's the image that we were just uh, I just exported from Photoshop CS6. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say open with Color Effects Pro. So for the final changes what I like to do is pull out a little bit more detail out of the image. Uh, there's a lot hidden in there that Photomatix has kept for us. Um, we just haven't asked the computer to really pull it out. So I like um, Color Effects Pro 4 because of that very reason. It makes it very easy to adjust. You can see it automatically has applied this, uh, probably made it a bit too warm. I do like the saturation that it does on it, so I'll keep that the same. Then I'll hit add a filter. The ones that I like for HDR type images, the first one is this detail extractor. So you can see that it's done some nice work there. I like what it's doing to this bridge. I don't like what it's doing to the sky. You can see that it's banding it a little bit too much, which I don't like, and I don't like what it's doing to the water. So what I'll do is just get it to apply. By hitting Option and clicking on this, I can copy it on down. And this way it'll only apply to the boathouse and to the um, bridge leading up to the boathouse. There we go. It's fine. That's fine. This is probably a bit too small here. There we go. So you can see the before and after. Give it a little bit more detail, which I like. Add another filter. The other one I really like is this tonal contrast. Now the default values come up really strong on it, so don't get too scared. You can see it divides it up between highlights, midtone, shadows, and saturation. Because I've had brilliance and warmth, I've already added the saturation I want to it, so I'll drop that down to zero so we don't compound the saturation too much. Next what I usually do is I like to divide this by two, bring this down to about 12 or so. 11 or 12. Bring this one down to 25%. 
I'm just taking the original values and cutting them in half. It's a good starting point. I may alter it a bit more after that, but just as a good starting point. You could click before and after to see, okay, I like what it's doing to the water. I like what it's doing to the boathouse. I hate what it's doing to the sky. So what I'll do is I'll hit one of these negative control points and just basically put these all across the sky there. Okay, we'll click this one, bring it down a little bit. There. Okay, we'll make these a bit smaller so they don't impact. There we go. So you can see the before and the after. It really isn't affecting the sky anymore, but it does give me the bridge and the water just a little bit of uh, more attention. I'm not quite convinced with the water. Okay. I'll go ahead and add it then. Tonal contrast. Just doing this again because I decided I didn't want it, didn't like it on the water either. So I'm going to take it off the sky. And just put it. leading all the way to the boathouse. There we go. So we could see the before and the after. It gives it a bit more contrast on there, which I like. I'm going to increase the midtones a little bit. I think I could live with that. Go ahead and hit save. While that's saving, um, the next step that I usually do is I uh, bring it back into uh, Lightroom just to take a very close look at it, make sure I'm happy with it. I usually don't make any changes unless I see a spot that I somehow had missed. And uh, I will take that, export it into a nice JPEG, and that's what I will post online. Okay, so I've, uh, just to get us caught up, I took the raw images from the camera into Lightroom, made a few adjustments, transferred it out to Photomatix, which combined the five images into one HDR image, which I then imported into Photoshop, made a few adjustments there, exported it there and took it to uh, Color Effects Pro, which I did a few changes, and now I'm back into Lightroom uh, just for the final touches before it's ready to go. So one thing that I, one slider that I really love in Lightroom is this clarity one, and I don't see it really uh, easily copied in Photoshop or anywhere else. So I'll give it a touch of clarity, and the next thing that I'll do is apply a gradient filter. I should have done this in in Photoshop, uh, but I forgot. So what I'll do is I'll hit uh, negative uh, 0.25 of a stop, a quarter of a stop exposure. And I'll just uh, pick it up here, and if you hit shift, it'll keep it level with the horizon. And we'll just do that. Bump up the saturation ever so slightly. And that's good to go. Overall, happy with the image. I think that uh, that is ready to share. Hit export. I will send it to my Lost in Transit folder and call this the uh, Swan Boathouse HDR out of Perth, Australia. And I will leave it as JPEG. I'll limit the size just to make it nice and easy to upload. I'll give it a touch of sharpening just for the sake of the, uh, of the computer screens you guys will be looking at it out and I'll hit export. 
So folks, there you have the final image. If you uh, take a look and we zoom in, you can see that uh, we have quite a bit of detail there, which is fantastic to see. Uh, I will be posting this online along with the five raw files that were used to create it. If you guys would like to uh, download it so you could follow along using the same uh, pictures that I used, you could download that on uh, www.lostintransit.com. And thank you very much, and uh, I'm looking forward to loading up a, a few other tutorials as time goes by. Thanks for your time.